Next question read, two charges each equal to Q are capped at X <coughs> is equal to minus A and X is equal to A on the X axis. Particle of mass M and a charge Q0 is equal to Q by 2 is placed at the origin. If the charge Q0 is given a small displacement Y less less than A along the Y axis, the net force acting on the particle is proportional. Now, <coughs> drawing <coughs> the position of the charges here one charge Q is at minus A and another charge Q is at a position X is equal to plus A. The Q naught charge which is placed at the origin is being displaced in the Y direction by a small displacement Y and that be the position of Q naught. Now the force acting on Q naught due to the Q will be in this direction let it be this force F. And due to this Q, again, <coughs> it will be in this direction. The magnitude of the force will be same. Hence, I am representing it by the force F. Now, from the figure, we can see, let this angle be theta, as this angle be theta. The horizontal component of the forces will cancel out. And the resultant force will add to, and that resultant will be 2F cos theta. Using Coulomb's law, I can write 2 force will be equal to K Q Q naught upon separation between the two charges will be A square plus Y square to under root. So I can write under root of A square plus Y square whole square and cos theta will be equal to this will be the theta as cos theta will be equal to Y upon under root of A square plus Y square. Just me the result 2 K Q, Q naught, Y upon A, A square plus Y square to the power 3 by E. As Y is much, much less than A, we can neglect this Y from the denominator. Hence, force, resultant force, turns out to be proportional to, hence the answer is, that is Next question read A beam of unpolarized light of intensity I0 is passed through a <coughs> polarized A and then through another polarized B which is oriented so that its principal plane makes an angle 45 relative to that of A, the intensity of the emergent light. Now, initially you will be having an unpolarized light. It is being passed through a polarized with any <laughs> direction of transmission axis. When this unpolarized light passes through a polarized, the intensity simply becomes I0 by E. Now, this polarized light is being passed through another polarized whose transmission axis is oriented at an angle of 45 degree to the initial polar. Now, according to the Malus law, intensity transmitted of the polarized light will be I0 cos square theta. Theta is the angle between the two transmission axes. So, from this result, I would be equal to I0 by 2 cos square 45. Hence, our result comes out to be I not by so the correct option is the question read the anode voltage of the photocell is capped fixed the wavelength lambda of the light falling on the cathode is gradually changed plate current I of the photocell varies as follows. We have to choose a correct option among the graph. We know that the energy of the photon is given by Hc by lambda naught. Now, for a electron to come out from the metal surface, this energy should be greater than the work function of the light. If we increase the lambda of the light, energy of the photon decreases and the electron will not come up. So, there exists a maximum 
wavelength beyond which there will be no photo current. Let that maximum wavelength called threshold wavelength be lambda naught. Beyond this, there must not be any current. So the variation of the current will be with the lambda will be of this. Hence, the correct option will be third. Question read, two coherent point sources S1 and S2 are separated by a small distance D as shown. Fringes obtained on the screen will be. Now, if suppose in a space we will be having two sources S1 and S2. Then in the YDSC we have learned that the pattern form will be a family of hyperbola in space. So I am representing the dark line for one uh, maxima and with the yellow with for minimum. So you will be having an alternative hyperbolic planes in the space with maxima and minima. Suppose this plane represents where the part difference will be 0 which represents the maxima and here the part difference will be lambda by 2 which represents a minima. Now, in this particular problem, the screen has been placed perpendicular to the line joining the two sources S1 and S2. Now, when these hyperbolic planes meet this screen, so due to symmetry, the pattern that we obtain on the screen will be such that it will be forming the concentrate itself. So, intersection of this plane green and the hyperbola will be in concentric circle. So the answer will be third. The next question will be, a metallic rod of length L is tied to a string of length 2L and made to rotate with angular speed omega on a horizontal table with one end of the string fixed. If there is a vertical magnetic field B in the region, the EMF induced across the end of the rod is. Now, <coughs> redrawing the figure, let this be in a string with the length 2L and this will be the rod with the length L. So, this is the point we are viewing the top view. So, from this point the axle will be passing and the system will be rotating with angular speed omega. Now, we are interested to find out the EMF developed in the rod between the point A and B. Supposing a dx element in the rod at a distance x from the x. Now the velocity of this element will be omega x. So the d by our formula is v cross b dot dx in any elemental now here the magnetic field is out of the board, direction of the magnetic field is out of the board. Omega x and v are perpendicular to each other. So v cross b will be equal to v that will be equal to omega into x to b sin 90. The direction of this omega, this v cross b will be along the radius let it be er cap dot dl into dl. Now, this will give me the result that omega x b. Now, dl will be a dx element and the direction angle between the er and dl vector will be 0. So, I can write it to be as, as a dot product omega x b dx cos 0 which fetches me a result omega x b dx. It has to be integrated to get the EMF. EMF will be integration omega x b dx. Now the x varies from as I am required to find out the EMF between a and b. So limit will be 2 L 2 b. Solving this we will be getting omega b x square by 2, so that will be equal to 
3 L whole square minus 2 L whole square. That comes out to be 9 minus 4. That is 5 mega B L square by Hence, among the choice, the answer will be third. Next question read, in a hydrogen like atom, electron makes a transition from an energy level within a quantum number n to another with quantum number n minus 1. If n is greater data than 1, the frequency of radiation emitted is proportional. We know that from the Bohr model that 1 by lambda will be equal to R z square 1 by n minus 1 whole square minus 1 by n. Now as the hydrogen atom is there, so z would be equal to 1 and changing the lambda to frequency, I can write it that frequency will be equal to R to C 1 by n minus 1 ka whole square minus 1 by n. Now that frequency comes out to be CR taking LCM n minus 1 whole square n square n square minus solving this n square plus 1 minus 2n. This gives me the result that n square will be cancelled out 2n minus 1 con this comes out to be n minus 1 whole square n square. Now, putting the approximation that n is much, much greater than 1, so we can neglect the 1 in terms of 2n. So, that is approximately comes out to be twice of n and n minus 1 will approximately be equal to n, so it becomes n square. So, the frequency f, frequency f becomes proportional to 1 by then 4, 1 by n. So, answer will be third.